Good morning. This is the Lock Doc coming back to you. All right. Today we're going to be talking about different cylinder types. Uh, first on the agenda is going to be conventional cylinders. Conventional cylinders uh, look very similar to this. Uh, some have uh, different variations over here in the tailpiece and how the tailpiece is connected to the lock itself. Uh, this type on the left is one that's primarily used within Schlegs, PDQs, Hagers, MTAC. Um, you can kind of go down the line. Um, they're, they're used quite frequently. Uh, one thing that is to note, although these look the same, the diameter on this barrel is smaller than the diameter on this barrel. That's one thing that makes sergeant cylinders uh, unique. Uh, this type right here, this works for the 7 line, 10 line, 11 line. Uh, it works with the padlocks. It works on their 6500 series. The only part that differs is the tailpiece. For example, that tailpiece is used on an 11 line. That tailpiece is used on their six line or their knob. This tailpiece right here is used on 6500, seven line, and ten line. Uh, and then the padlock uses a tailpiece that is that big. Sorry, going the wrong direction there, but whereas with this style you have different tailpieces and different lengths similar to the sergeants. Uh, what's also nice about these if you look at how it's made it's these little characteristics that make one different than the other. You can kind of tell on this one there's a little 45 degree notch. It's kind of hard because this uh, piece right here kind of overhangs a little bit but there is a little 45 degree notch right here whereas on this side it's completely a 90 degree angle. Um, the next cylinder up are, is this one. This one is a mortise cylinder as this one is a mortise cylinder. Again, the barrel diameter on this one is different than the barrel diameter on this one. Where they also differ has to do with the tailpiece on the back. You can see on this one where the tailpiece connects, I guess you could say it's, you know, shorter and wider. This one is longer, skinnier. So tailpieces do not interchange from sergeants to Ilkos or PDQ or, you know, you can go down the line. Um, this is the more standard cylinder out in the world, especially like if you're talking about aluminum storefronts. Um, but what defines it as a mortise lock is the threads on the back. The other lock that is similar to this is the rim cylinder. Now the rim cylinder is holds the same diameter from here to here, but it has a flat tailpiece that protrudes out the back. This tailpiece is typically used to used on exit devices. Uh, specific aluminum, aluminum storefront doors where putting the key in just kind of creates a momentary you know the door is unlocked and then you know you take your key out it goes back to being locked whereas these are typically used in situations where you want to turn the key to like an on position or an off position in the case of a key switch or they can also be used to uh, momentarily open a door such as an aluminum storefront latch um, so they are different, but they are similar. Uh, this is held in by two screws coming in right here, whereas these are actually screwed into a lock case. Uh, the tail pieces on the back typically have these notches right here, which are just kind of easy cut marks. Uh, this tail piece has not been cut, so this one's a fresh one out of the box remotely. Um, the tail pieces, anyway. Uh, the easy way to cut these is you can take a pair of pliers or vice grips, something, but you hold one side and then you just take the other one and snap it. I'm sure if I was the Hulk, I could probably just two. Um, always, if you're unsure of where to cut, like if, I, if I'm thinking this one is going to be where I'm going to snap it at, 
I would snap it here, see how it works, because you can always put a tailpiece in to make up the distance. Um, you know, and if that doesn't work, then you come back and cut here. Uh, the cost on this piece is trivial. It's somewhere like the dollar and some change, so it's nothing big. It's just more of an inconvenience because you got to stop what you got to do, go get the tailpiece if you don't have it. Um, another thing I feel I should mention too. The location of these holes for a sergeant actually sit like a sixteenth or an eighteenth of an inch up higher than we'll say like the standard Ilco rim cylinder. And I keep bringing up Ilco because Ilco is used commonly in situations um, because it's cheap. No BS there. Um, but anyways, the prep on these is different. And what ends up happening, because this happened to me personally installing these into doors, is that uh, some aluminum doors will have these two cutouts and this cutout. Whereas some doors will just have a single circular cutout. And that works great because typically there's a flat plate that uh, helps sandwich this to the door. Um, so yeah, that's another thing to pay attention to. Um, so if you got a sergeant cylinder, you got to replace it with a sergeant cylinder. If you have an Ilco one, an Ilco one would work just as well too. Um, anyways, moving on from those. Next up is interchangeable cores. This one is defined as a small format. Small format because uh, both these circles here are the same diameter. It really, it's snowman core is what some people have referred, referred it to me as. Now Best has always been the big manufacturer in this realm, um, but given over the past 10-15 years other people have came into the small format IC game. Uh, one of those people is Falcon, another one is Arrow. Um, but what's different between a Falcon and a Best is that Bests are all typically held in with these single individual caps. It's not as convenient as you may think, or you may not think that. I like Falcons because it's just a single slide that goes across the top, as opposed to these pins, which honestly it takes kind of a nice fine touch um, to get it. I don't know if you can, this will focus in, but you can see all of these kind of sit, we'll just say a sixteenth inch down from, if we call this the shear line. Whereas this is very simple. You just put the cap on, hit it with a hammer, and it's on. You can also tear it out. Um, to do that, usually come in through the back right here with a small flathead screwdriver, and then just kind of peel it back. Um, but they are made pretty much exactly the same. The control pin is on the same side right there. Um, interchangeable cores can come in 6 or 7 pin. Again, uh, six and seven pin is determined by the amount of holes or pins that go down the length. Uh, the more pins you have, the larger the key system can be supported. Uh, now, moving on. Oh yeah, the other fun thing about small format interchangeable cores is that you have to go from the tip to the bow. Uh, so on normal keys, such as you know these, the key is read from the bow to the tip. So when you see this number on the back, let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah. It says seven three eight six nine four. So that's a seven three eight six nine four. Whereas on this key, no key numbers, you'd start here. And I'm not sure what that is, but you know you go from one two, three, four, five. It has to do with when this key is going in the key cutter, there's no key stop over here. Or as you can tell on these, this is called the key stop. That's where the key hits the barrel. So that's, you know, how it knows where these pins are in relation to the pins in the cylinder. Um, but yeah, this has been around a lot. Uh, they're used quite frequently. Uh, the other type of interchangeable core is referred to as a large format. Large format interchangeable cores, they are made by, you got Schlegg, Sargent, Corbin Ruswin, Yale, Medico. 
I think who else does? Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's more. There's way more companies in this world than them. Um, these are different. Uh, here's the control arm on this one. Control key goes in. And that's what interacts that. I've done a video on keying these up in the past. Um, there are some IC cores, uh, specifically Schlage, Yale. Um, they're very easy to key. And it has to do with, with Sargent's and Corbin Russwin's. You have to have a certain metric or matrix uh, in order to get all your pins to work up or line up and work. Whereas with the Sarge, or I'm sorry, the Yale and the Schlegs, your key blank is just a little bit longer over here on the tip, and that's meant to interact with the control arm that's back here on the back. Uh, so that's one of the reasons a lot of people like going with Schleg interchangeable cores, because if you lose that control key, all you have to do is cut any operating key on the control blank, and you can use that as a control key. Um, yeah. They're kind of cool when they all get to go uh, to work. Now, one thing that's very similar between the two is you see these two holes back here. These two holes typically have a wishbone tailpiece that comes out the back right here, and then that's what engages the lock when it's working, not working. Um, Old-style locks had those pins pinned into the lock itself, whereas new styles have a tailpiece. And, well, let me have one. These tailpieces look similar to this. You have this wishbone. Now on this type right here, it does kind of like a 90 degree turn. Whereas most types, this flat tailpiece right here just simply just keeps continuing off the prongs. Uh, this one's made by Falcon. And uh, I keep it around simply because of that little 90 degree turn right there. Uh, occasionally that comes up. And if you got any questions, feel free to leave them below. Uh, thank you for watching. And other than that, hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. Thank you.